everybody. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in, Hot Town. Things are good around here. Things are real good. Except for that mosquito. Let me get some spray on that leg. One sec, please. <laughs> Hold. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Had to put a little bit off on there. Of course, the weather's nice now, but we still got the mosquitoes. Good old St. Louis mosquitoes. I, I hate them really, <laughs> but what are you going to do? So, for today, this is kind of the biggie right here. Come show you what's going on here in a second. You can tell it might look a little different. Oh, yeah. Oh, dang. It's okay. It's starting to rain. <laughs> He's outside because. Need some room, but it's going to start sprinkling. Yeah, he can handle the sprinkles. It's okay. If it rains, yeah, I might have to push it back in. It's just barely sprinkling. So, muy bueno. Over here. Looks a little different. It got a little treatment. A little bit of the, <laughs> as you guys know, my tea coat. Oh, yep, I was doing some, some, oh, you see there, there's the yellow. <laughs> yep, went ahead and roughed that up, went ahead and hit it with the tea coat. As you guys can see, the tea coat, I, I love using the trim coat. I, I call it tea coat. It's AT2 satin black. It's got just enough satin to where it has a beautiful shine or a semi gloss, but yet it still is a matte finish that, that's really what I wanted up here. You don't want anything in front of you under the fairing. You don't want anything in front of you under the fairing that's bright. It will reflect back and tend to kind of... It'll glare in the sunlight and it'll blind you and it'll drive you insane. I've seen, I've seen guys on newer stuff paint everything on the inside of the fairing. From, all the, from Harley from the factory, it comes all matte black. For a reason, guys. I know it looks pretty when you paint it, but uh, I prefer the matte black. So if, if I if I'm doing it, that's what it's getting. So that's how that goes. <laughs> and up oh, over here, mirror. Need to give it a little wipe down because I got some. Yeah, there's some some dust and some yeah more dust and some fingerprints and I was like I was sweating. <laughs> so let's get that cleaned up and back on here and let's see what it looks like one second let me get things tuned in okie dokie let's go ahead and come in here with this set these here for one second just a couple to get it started and i will grab a towel from back here Oh yeah, luckily yeah, that's okay. That's all just wiping right off. So it was just basically just nothing on there. Just dust and a little debris from drilling. And probably just some leftover stuff from them cutting it. Alright, there we go. That's looking real good. Once I get on there and get the final wipe down, that's gonna look beautiful. All right, come in here with this one. We'll go right here in the center. All right. And I think I can get in here. I think. I think I can. I think I can. Oh. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, we're in. Sweet. All right. And we'll just put this one here as a somewhat of a placeholder for right now, just to hold us there. And then one more over here to get us up into place. There we go. Washer on, tighten bolt. Can't see any of it. Must use Braille. Oh, fingertip. 
Oh, oh, I think, oh, yeah. Oh, we're in. Yes. Okay. Next up. Oh, this one's oh, tucked under there. Barely get to it. We're in. All right. Make sure that's clean. Make sure it's not underneath there. If it's underneath there, I can't get it. Yeah, that's all on the outside. One little piece in there. Oh, it came out. And next up over here. Right here. Oh, get it in the hole. There we go. Just worked out. As you guys can see, I hold the washer and the nut with one finger. That's a washer and a nut. And I hold it like that so I can just put the bolt right on. Whoop, like that and tighten it down, but it gets fishy. <laughs> you gotta slide the washer on and then start to tighten oops, oh, start to tighten the bolt with your finger. Just like that. All right. And we are very close here, guys, to Blondie's final look as a finished, beautiful CB750F, the very first F model from 1976, shot with the beautiful crispy yellow which was destined to be a dealership display model in Florida with the yellow color a gentleman from Illinois purchased the showroom model in Florida could not leave the dealership without it he said I need that bike so I can go home and go for a ride which he did in Illinois then, after several years, it was relocated to Kansas City, Missouri, and was ridden and loved for quite some time. It then suffered the fate of many old Hondas. They need a good carb clean, and the whole bike gets taken apart. For some reason, people think that if the carbs need cleaned, they have to disassemble the whole bike. It was in parts when I got it, in bins. Stacks, a couple stacks and in bins. Uh, she back in one piece. Blondie's happy. <laughs> Tighten these couple up over here. And I'm using my plier fingers on the inside. You don't want to get these too tight, guys. Don't use like tools. <laughs> when when your finger quits letting go, it's okay. If it ever needs to be snug down, just do it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about torquing it. It's plastic. Well, this is fiberglass on Lexan. <laughs> oh, we got one more. I almost forgot it. Where is it? What is it? What did I do with it? Did I lose it already? Let me get another one. I think I have some more. I think I can, I think I can. Oh, I thought I could. Yeah. All right, right here, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, got a couple of them. Sweet. A couple of the blues. Oh yeah. Giggity. Snug this one down here. Oh, uh, uh, oh there yeah, now we're good. Alright. Alright. I'll go ahead and top this one in. 
you get here on the end so I can actually spin it. There we go. So we can actually snug. Whoa, that was a good catch. So we can actually snug it back down. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's snugged in there. Perfect. Awesome. Looking good. All right, looking got that one already, and that's good. 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 And I just need to get a washer and nut for this last one out here. I think I have a well, I had a washer right there. Let's move that. It's not biggest thing I have to tell myself always: the seat is not a workbench. All right, there's the washers on. It's the very last one that you can actually stay because it's not pointing down, <laughs> it's just pointing in. There we go. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, that looks so good, guys. I got a washer up here that is out of place. Let's get that. You don't belong there. Put that there. Oh, I got it. I just got it. One more towel. <laughs> Her brand new seat. Brand new seat cover's got dust on it because she's been just sitting here. Get that cleaned off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. I gotta get my feet up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, even with the helmet, it's going to fit perfect. Ah. Uh, yep. Ah. Uh, Bonnie needs to go full send here very soon. Oh, yeah. Yep. Give you guys a little look see here. Oh. And also. You guys can see it was tipped forward before because it didn't clear in here. See how it fits like it should now? Ooh. What I did, I realized this fairing, I don't think it had ever been installed on anything. I think. I think it probably sat, I've seen many, because I was there and worked in parts and in the shop, at dealerships, get on my leg book, <laughs> in dealerships, and, you know, parts, houses, whatever, floor display models just kind of sit there and the parts get lost and they never get sold. And they never get installed on anything because they're just kind of a display model. I think maybe the fairing was a display model also. It came from eBay. It wasn't ever trimmed to fit anything. It had some random holes drilled in it that weren't really correct to fit anything. Because this windshield's 100% correct. So, I think it, it, it had never been fit on anything except for maybe like a display. It's kind of my guess. Because nothing was trimmed, every, nothing fit. And it sat way too far forward on the top. You ready my towel there? So... I just barely trimmed it up here, barely trimmed it there. See if you guys can see through the windshield now. So it fits the gauges real tight. Hangs down just a little bit here. It has these two places, you know, let me hold the camera straight here. It has these two places where, you, you know, where, where gauges maybe could be if I ever wanted to add two more gauges. I could maybe add an oil pressure gauge which would be pretty easy, and maybe a charge gauge, which would be pretty easy. You know, add a voltmeter and a oil pressure gauge up here because those are a little bit bigger than two inches, so a two-inch gauge would fit in there perfect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> we'll see. 
drilling that and messing with that fiberglass is not fun. Oh, it's it sucks. Yeah, you see the the there's dust. It, I need to clean everything. Yeah, there's fiberglass dust right there. There's some in here. There's some out here. There's a bunch of it. That's just the leftovers after cleaning. I already, I've already cleaned everything one time. But yeah, and, and let's let's just one more time here. Beep. Clean, clean, clean. And it's still it's it's kind of loose on there. I still need to tighten everything down. Cause I'm pretty sure that's where I want it. I was just I wanted to double check the fitment with me sitting on it. That's really was the one thing I didn't check. Uh, yeah, the angle looks perfect now. Yeah, it's yep, that's spot on. Oh, uh, yep, loving it. Blondie's in check. Hell yeah. Over here. Let's see how Mr. Dagwood doing out here in the rain. I'm sorry, bro. Oh, you're getting a little wash. That's okay. He needs a little wash. He been dirty. I, I've been riding him. We done been several hundred miles. Uh, <laughs> a couple off-road ventures. We, we down some gravel. Uh, a little bit of a couple burnouts on the gravel. Uh, he get a little wash. He be good. I get you in a minute, bro. Uh, one minute. Over here, guys. The real, what I want to get to now. Let me get this one second here. Bear with me. Tuning in my <laughs> my wonderful tripod here. There we go. Okay. First off, let's just check after. I had a bunch of fuel in it for the dyno run. Okay, yeah, I still got a bunch of fuel in there. That's good. Turn key on, we're good. Everything's looking good there. Yeah, we got plenty of voltage. That's all good. Love this gauge because it tells me all kinds of stuff. Alrighty. Yeah. Yeah, let's just go ahead and close this door so we don't blow out the neighbors. <laughs> we'll leak a little bit of sound out the front, but that's okay. <laughs> what comes out the back is the hot rod noise. <laughs> that's where that's where the heat goes. <laughs> okay, so we're good, we're good, we're good. Once again, my pre-flight check. Let's just go ahead because I wanna I wanna check this thing on boost. We're gonna see what happens. Dino was good, wide open. We need to get this thing to launch and not bog. Good, 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 good. Real good. Joke. Still didn't put my cable on it yet. Oh, mirror's all whacked out.
Okay. Sounded good. And if you guys ever just see me look down and kind of bow my head like I'm praying, I'm tuning things in. I'm listening. I listen. If I need to, I feel. But usually I can hear everything. And also, too, if you see the headlight get turned on and off, that's my kill switch. My kill switch turns on the fuel pump. The It pulls, starts to pull back timing if the boost comes up. And it also turns on the headlight, the hob switch system. Pretty much everything turns on. When the headlight turns on, that's because either the hob switch is turning on with boost or I'm turning it on right here. What we checked on the dyno was everything except for the two-step. Let's see what it does. I think we're going to need to turn it up just a little bit. I need a little more boost off the hit. Let's see. If you guys could hear there, I'll take that back. So my switch is on. My key is off. Listen, I'm going to turn the key on. Headlight's going to turn on. Everything is going to turn on. I got fuel pressure. RPM. Show you guys out here. Pop seat off. MSD box right there. Got a dial on it. Let's turn it up. Let me click on this fan to suck out some new fumes. <laughs> and for this one, we need our. <laughs> Oh, I forgot. We need our tuning screwdriver, our tuning specs, and our tuning headlight. <laughs> so we can see down in here to get to it. And there's one thing we need to turn up. That's our two-step RPM. So right now, let me see. So it is two-step. There, it's this one right here. And I am at... You see, I'm at 50. I'm at 5,000. Okay. So, I'm at 5,000 RPM right now. I thought I was higher than that. So, there's 51, 52. Okay, let's try that. Or 52. Let's give it a hit. Okay, so we increased it 200 RPM. Let's see what happens here.
me try one other thing. One sec here. Let me get my tuning gear back on. Okie dokie, so. Right now. Wish it was easier to see in here. <laughs> this one's tricky to get to. There's several dials here. And this one's probably the hardest. Okay, let's try it right there. Okay. And what I'm adjusting, guys, I didn't turn up the RPM. I'm adjusting the ignition pullback. I have my button over here. When I hit the button, it pulls back the ignition to let it help build boost so it fires late and it fires the fire into the turbine and spools the turbo. Let's see what it does. The best part is, I know the tune is safe now. We're good to go. <laughs> time to go real fast guys like share subscribe because as soon as this rain goes away we're going fast here very soon I promise uh, thanks for watching so much always way more to come from hometown we ain't done yet <laughs> let's ride let me get Mr. Dagwood in here he's out there freezing right Watch guys.